Welcome back to Reality Files. Demetrius here. We're about to go into it. Thank you for joining me today out here in nature. I hope you're in nature. Feeling the sun, feeling the wind, feeling the ground. Good stuff. This is where I get all my information from, right here. This is my teacher. It's all you need, people. You already have all the information. We just need to uh, remember it and apply it. But since you're here, let's talk. Because as of recently, I've been getting, my focus has been shifting more towards the, uh, the subconscious mind manifestation and magic. Um, beforehand, it was really more focused on like the energy work, the meditation, uh, you know, getting a lot of puzzle pieces here and there. But yeah, this this magic manifestation, um, it's real. <laughs> yeah, magic is real. 100%. And it's... I'm going to try to deliver this and show you perspective in which even the most scientific-minded person and skeptical individual with no faith in, in the divine or anything of this sort could understand the magic that I'm trying to communicate and could apply it with some success. Hopefully most of my viewers are pretty adept in terms of open-mindedness, a clear mind, uh, meditation, and, you know, because like you, you have to have the faculties of your mind and human system working properly to perform this at to a degree that would, you know, really contribute to your life. But even the most skeptical person in the world about magic or any of this stuff, try this out. You might just, you might just see it works. So, magic. Let's see. Basically, I just wrote up three pages. of notes on the subconscious mind, how it, the subconscious mind is responsible for the paradigm in which you live in, okay? Everything you see out here, everything you want, how you feel, the being you have become, is all due to programming of the subconscious mind. You see, the conscious mind deals with, it's, it's very analytical and deals with very few things, but can go deep into them. See, the subconscious mind lays the groundwork and the foundation for how we operate and the reality in which we exist in. Okay, we all know this. We all know this. For instance, if you just bought a new car, all of a sudden, you may start seeing that exact same model of car everywhere. And you never saw it before, or rarely saw it before. But now every time you get in the car and go driving, you see the same car you have. Was there an increase of cars of that model? No. The only thing that changed was your programming subconsciously that picks up on cues in your external environment. Because at every moment we are bombarded by sensory input, okay? We're feeling, we have five senses, all the, like imagine driving down the highway and if you actually picked up on all of the information, every single sign 
all the trash on the side of the road, every license plate you pass, your brain wouldn't be a cluttered mess of shit. Because all that stuff doesn't matter. Our brains are the most advanced computing system and technology ever produced in the universe, period. Yeah, you are the operator of the most advanced system out here. And it has an... Let's just say your brain is a filter, and it must be a filter. Because, like, like, like I was just saying, like, there's so much input and data coming in, like, it, all of it, like, does a great job of just kind of flushing out the stuff that doesn't matter. It's remarkable, like, what we retain and why we, why we retain it. Like, certain clips from movies and things throughout our lives that resonate with our paradigm. That is why we pick up on these things, and that is why we retain it. And as a result of this, we, we are essentially only gathering and seeing a reality in which we have been programmed to see, okay? This is key for understanding magic. I'm gonna talk about magic right here in terms of subconscious and more of a scientific approach to it because I feel like that will lend a lot more understanding and will convince those minded people that maybe there is something to it. So where do I want to start? Okay, I'm just going to dive into the overview on how to do magic and manifestation. Like a quick overview that has worked for me time and time again and I've been refining it and you know building my skills yeah we're gonna go through this overview and then I'm gonna talk about some notes about magic in general things I've learned things that can help you barriers in the way and ultimately how you can start programming your subconscious mind to take control of your reality when you manifest and Basically, the entire life you live, because I'm teaching you how to control your paradigm right now. For instance, if someone's poor and they want money, they've been trying to get money for a long time, but they're still poor. It is not their lack of, it's not their inability to make money, it's not their lack of skills or talent. It is the way they think about money that results, that is, that creates the paradigm in which they exist in. Books like Thinking Grow Rich, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, they all go into this. It's not about how hard you work, how many talents you have, how many skills you have. It's about how you think about money. And that's just one small aspect of the subconscious mind and programming. How you think about yourself, how you view this world, all of it, how you feel at every moment, the energy you bring into each day, everything you have in your life was created from a thought. And that thought only appeared, that thought originated from the paradigm in which you exist in and the programming subconsciously. <laughs> so we get to go into an awesome topic today. Let's dive in. So, <sighs> For manifestation, there's two things you need to do. It's force and form, okay? That, that, that sounds very simple. You have to set the intention, the form, right? Create what you want. So if you want to manifest money, if you want to manifest a girlfriend or a relationship, if you like any of these things, right? It is, the form is the intention, the, the desired result. And the force is the energy, the emotion, the drama, right? That you put into it to communicate to your subconscious mind what it is that you want, okay? We are very bad at doing this right now. The majority of the population. You see, the subconscious mind is, like I said, 
the most advanced tool, com like computer, and I think it goes way beyond just like computational processing. But like the subconscious mind is beyond powerful. It is, it like words couldn't express this. Yet, if we have a dirty mind, and we're being programmed unconsciously without our awareness of it by TV, music, people, thoughts, food, habits, all these things are creating the paradigm in which we exist within. And many people have no idea that they can program their subconscious mind or why they should. Back in the ancient days, the, all the programming, the uh, what was communicated to the subconscious mind came from the person. Okay? Because they didn't have all these external things fighting for their attention at every moment of their life. Ads weren't coming up every 30 minutes. All the billboards and like it's we're, we live in this chaotic mess of unconscious individuals who are like it's not their fault. It's just it's the environment in which we are placed in but all these people, if they're unaware of their subconscious mind, then they're just spreading the shit and the programming that they've picked up along the way to everyone else around them, and the entire system, society, and culture is programming you to be a consumerist, materialist, like, you know, someone that's going to feed them the capitalist machine and be a good worker bee. At Reality Files, we're all about taking power back. And this is huge. This is huge right here. So, force and form. Okay? Force and form. Force. The emotion. The energy. The drama. What you put into it. The form. The visualization. The imagination. The intention. The desired result. Seeing it through a full sensory experience communicating to your subconscious mind exactly what you want and knowing how the subconscious mind operates. The subconscious mind does not operate in words. It operates in symbolism, images, emotion and experience. Okay, this is how we communicate to the subconscious mind. And the biggest barrier to telling your subconscious mind what it is that you want to manifest the largest barrier is our conscious mind. And many people don't have awareness of the conscious mind or any type of mindfulness. So as a result of this, their conscious mind, the ego, is constantly turning thoughts, constant thoughts all day, every day, right? And these thoughts are a result of their paradigm. And they don't have a direct line of communication with the subconscious any longer because they're not connected to nature. They're stressed out, anxious, worried about a million different things on the social media. It's constant stimulus all day, every day. Maybe they meditated for 10 minutes in their life before. Like, just think about an indigenous individual, like, you know, an aborig aboriginal or you know, like a, someone from a shamanic tribe in the Amazon rainforest. They're in a meditation all day. Like, that's the natural state of human function, essentially. It's like a mindfulness state. Because, like, you know, yes, they're going to go gather their food and go hunting and, you know, do the stuff around the, the village. But beyond that, they're just with nature. They're at peace. Like, it's, it's a very different... <laughs> way of living than this westernized culture like it's I don't want to get into this but the point being is you need to develop a clear mind and mindfulness and awareness of the state you're in mentally so you can start to forage the direct line of communication with your subconscious. The conscious mind is always getting in the way. The conscious mind is a thing that terrorizes you all day. It's a thing that stresses you out and makes you anxious. 
the conscious mind, if it's not under control, it controls you. Okay? It, it is constantly spinning thoughts through your head that are meaningless and actually just physically hurting you. And like I was saying, the, the conscious mind is about it is analytical. Right? It's like the random access memory on a computer. It it's it can hold a few points of reference in it all like together at once not much beyond that. And in fact, if you are thinking, if you are thinking, that is the least, the, uh, the least powerful method of attaining what you want. It, go, it goes well beyond thinking. I've, always, I've said this over and over and over again. Language is the trap, the box. Language can be a beautiful thing, a, a way of communication. I personally think we fell from a higher form of communication that, uh, yeah, I, I think language is, is the, the box, the trap, the, because like right now you're thinking in words and the majority of your day is spent thinking in words. And when you're thinking in words, you are no longer communicating to your subconscious mind what it is that you want, what it is that you see, like basically your, your subconscious mind is being programmed by all the TV shows and all the ads and the everything that all the external nothing internal essentially so that's what we're going to try to break through right now so essentially what magic is and what manifestation is is combining a powerful form I mean a powerful force with a very clear form and like with enough force to send that through to the subconscious mind, right? And the subconscious mind is linked up to the global unconscious, the global mind, the, uh, the universal consciousness, right? And the, like, I personally believe, um, and this is not necessary for doing magic. You can think about how, about this however you want to, but I, I believe that our subconscious mind uh, cues in our paradigm, so what we see, what we look for, what we catch on to, like, if I think about money all the time, I'm going to see opportunities to make money. That's just how life is. That's how the subconscious mind works. But I think it goes well beyond this, going into uh, actually co-creating reality with all the other beings on Earth through what we are communicating to the global unconscious. Like, our subconscious mind is linked up to a massive internet. The internet is a sub-matrix based off the real matrix of consciousness. Okay? So, what I'm saying here is manifestation goes well beyond just programming you to see things that will help you get what you want. I think if you have enough force and a very clear line of communication to the subconscious mind where you can like literally drive what you want to manifest directly into the subconscious with enough force and enough power and enough energy that it creates ripples on the global unconscious, therefore manifesting in reality more often. You'll see what I mean here towards the end of the video, but so So planting the seed, if you want to get into magic and manifestation, you have to become a gardener. Yes, a gardener. <laughs> I hung out with Zen for a while, and if I could put a name on him, I, I would call him the gardener, because he's constantly planting seeds, burning ideas, burning what he wants, planting seeds all over New Orleans, and every day, He's going to harvest. This is the magician. This is the, the mastery of the subconscious and f the full awareness or access to the mind. And this, we're all capable of becoming this type of magician. We just have to start planting the seeds, start developing our lines of communication, and harnessing the power of the subconscious and the the global consciousness, unity consciousness. 
So planting the seed, the form, you have to form what you want. This is gonna be the seed, okay? You have to form what you want to manifest. Let's just go with money, okay? You have to, the form is a visualization, but you, it has to be very clear. And remember, the subconscious mind works in terms of images, symbolism, and like, I guess like an emotional experiment, experience. That's how, that's how the subconscious mind communicates, okay? So to create a good form, you need to add visualization, sensory input, and uh, sensory input, visualization, symbolism, and how, essentially, how you feel, or like what the desired outcome makes you feel like. So money, right? What does that feel like? What does that look like? The green dollar bill, right? You're going to have a lot of green symbolism, maybe a dollar sign, and uh, that's getting into a little bit of sigil work, which we'll get to later, but you, you want to build, you want to sit there for a good couple minutes, however long you need, to really create a good visualization of what you intend to manifest, the intention, okay? We're gonna go in into each one of these in depth. I'm just giving the overview here. The force behind it is the energy, okay? It is the emotion. It is, there's a law in the universe of equal exchange. Essentially, whatever you put into something, you get out of it, okay? So, if you wanna manifest $20, let's not do money, let's, Let's go with like, um, I want to see a horse, right? So essentially what you have to do is create the form of it and then add force, the energy. What, what, how will you feel when you see that horse? You have to invoke that feeling and that energy and amplify it as if you were already there and it has an amplified experience, right? So we invoke this energy, but we invoke it not just like some kind of like mental, like airy, far off thing. No, you have to invoke that energy into every cell of your body. This is the force, okay? You have to, you have to desire it and know you want this and you have to have the form. So then you can take that form and then drive it and basically scream with every cell of your body singing with the energy that that object will bring to you. How, when you manifest whatever you are trying to manifest, how will you feel? What emotion and energy will you get from that? That is the force that you put behind it, okay? And then we're, there's a lot more like drama and like you gotta be, you get, this is where the conscious mind can really stop you from doing any type of magic is, uh, like the conscious minds could be all analytical and be like, oh, this is stupid. This is not going to work. I'm not going to see a horse just by thinking about it and visualize the, visualizing the sensory experience and then putting emotion and energy into it. And there's no way. That's what the subconscious mind wants to think. I mean, the, the conscious mind. We have to get the conscious mind out of the way. Try this open-mindedly with complete faith in the outcome. And more than that, you have to... You have to to do magic, you have to come in with a childlike mindset, a playful mindset. Remember back when you were like six years old and you're playing uh, maybe cowboys and robbers or something like this? And like all these make-believe games we always played, all the like the doll houses or like whatever, right? As a child, we played these, we played these games and like it, it felt real. It felt like real life. So these games, like, they felt real, okay? And it's because as a child, we have a powerful imagination and we have a playfulness. We're not serious about life yet. We have a playfulness about everything. We just, like, with a couple with a couple kids in the neighborhood, you guys could be space cadets on Mars or fighting off an alien invasion in Africa and fully believe that it's happening, right? Well, a child is the master magician 
because when when you can fully believe and imagine and like get into an experience like that and fully believe it's actually real well shit you have a direct line to your subconscious mind right the child already has it they came into this world with it we lost it through socialization and whatnot and we're gonna reforge it so it's it's a playfulness right to We'll go more into the sigils and rituals and drama later, but it's the to invoke the energy into every cell of your body. This is talking about the force. You need to be dramatic. You need to get up and scream and throw up, throw up your arms, like especially if you're requiring a manif manifestation that requires a lot of energy. This is why I suggest, like, I would suggest, like starting trying to do manifestation and magic with things that wouldn't really phase you like uh maybe i don't finding a penny from 1988 or something like this on, on the ground like you see you would not get a very high emotional reaction from this and also it's it wouldn't take a lot to manifest this because it's like it's abundant so therefore you need you can put it doesn't require as much energy to put into it if you're trying to win the lottery shh, you know how hard it would be to replicate the feeling the energy the excitement the passion and all this stuff when you win 50 million dollars on a lottery ticket you know how hard it would be to replicate that beforehand without ever experiencing it because you've never experienced winning winning the lottery how do you how could you even put that much emotion into uh, the form? It would be very difficult. So start small until you can really develop your line of communication and your, your force and form. So planting the seed, let's talk about this. So after you have the form, the visualization, the sensory experience, Put the force behind it, the energy, the emotion, the passion, the drama, the flair, the childlike playfulness. After you have those two things, and you and you have built it up, you have expressed the force through every cell of your body being, invoked that energy and emotion fully, right? You, you have to set it and forget it. Set it and forget it because we cannot have the conscious mind interfering if you are still thinking about manifesting that penny a day later two days later three days later it's not going to happen the manifestation will only come when the subconscious mind can shine through and pick up on things it's it's when you're driving and kind of like that that daze you're 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 there you're present you're a little bit mindful but like uh, you're not having any thoughts. You're just driving down the road, right? And then you pick up on something that just flashes through to you and you like then you see that and it actually stays with you for weeks and months Why 